If you've never worked out before and you're looking to maximize your progress in the gym, regardless if you're a teenager or someone's grandma, this video is gonna be for you. What's going on guys? My name is Jake and this is your Body Comp Prescription. If you're new around here, I've been a personal trainer for over two years. I have my degree in exercise science and I've helped a countless amount of people achieve their dream physiques and fitness goals. And if that's something that you're interested in, please consider subscribing, you won't be disappointed. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of easy steps that'll help you get off on the right foot when starting off at the gym. I'm gonna give you three things that you should do and three things that you shouldn't do, so let's hop into it. Starting off with the things that you should do, you first need to identify what your goal is. Without a goal, you're gonna severely delay your progress because you don't have a clear destination if you don't have a clear destination, you won't have the directions in order to get there. I strongly recommend thinking about what it is that you are trying to do. And once you make your decision, you need to fully commit to that plan for at least eight to 12 weeks. If you wanna be the next Chris Bumstead, then great. Then you can fully pursue bodybuilding. If you wanna hold world records in powerlifting, then commit to powerlifting and so on. It's really important that your goal is clear because if it isn't, there's a high chance that you're jumping around from program to program and you won't see the results that you're looking for. Secondly, now that you have a clear picture of what it is that you want to do, find a program that fits your goals. Your program will be your roadmap. Don't pick a powerlifting focused program if your main goal is hypertrophy because muscle growth is what you're after, not necessarily strength. There are tons of programs out there. All I recommend is that you find one and stick to it. Almost every single program will work if you stick with it. If you don't know where to start and you want to make your own program, start by deciding how many days per week that you can train. I strongly suggest starting off by training three to five days per week. Any more than that, you'll sabotage your recovery. Any less than that, you might not be doing enough training. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of my favorite programs for beginners. If you wanna train three days per week, you can do full body all three times, or you can do something like an upper body day, a lower body day, and then a full body day, or you can choose to do the classic push-pull leg split. Pushing movements generally consist of chest, triceps, and shoulders. Pull days usually consist of back and biceps, and then legs is pretty self-explanatory. If you wanna train four days per week, I would recommend doing an upper, lower, upper, lower split, so that way you can train every body part twice in one week. This will maximize your volume without overtraining any one muscle group in particular. Or if you wanna train five days per week, you can go with something like a push-pull legs, and then an upper body day and a lower body day. This is all up to you, it's all about preference and what you can actually stick to. Once you decide on which split fits you best, then you compose your workouts like this. Each day you wanna start off with one to two compound movements. Then once you've picked your compounds for that day, you want to fill in the rest of your workout with three to six isolation movements or accessory movements. An isolation movement is an exercise that crosses only one joint like a bicep curl, whereas compound movements are exercises that cross multiple joints like a squat. The squat, for example, crosses your hip, knee, and ankle, which is why it's considered a compound movement. Then you just need to repeat this formula for the other days of the week with exercises that are specific to what you are training for that particular day. And the last thing that you should do is figure out how many calories you need in order to achieve the body that you want. There's a high chance that a lot of the people that are watching are trying to lose weight, which in that case means you need to go into a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit means that you need to consume less calories than your body needs in order for it to lose weight. And vice versa for the population that are trying to gain weight like myself, you need to be in a calorie surplus. A calorie surplus means that you need to eat more than your body requires in order for it to gain weight. If you're asking me, Jake, I don't know how many calories I need to eat. How do I find that out? I got you covered. Go check out this video that I made that'll walk you through how to get all of those numbers in just a couple of minutes based upon what your specific goal is. Once you've got your numbers all figured out, I suggest you download my fitness pal if you haven't already and use that to track your daily calorie intake. It's really important that you track your food until you have a really good understanding of what macronutrients and how many calories are in everything that you eat. Because until you meticulously track your food, there's a really strong chance that you're either going to be overeating or undereating. And depending on what your goal is, that may not be so good. So make sure that you're tracking. And as for the three things that you shouldn't do, you shouldn't be focused on mixing it up in the gym every single time that you work out because the primary driving factor of achieving your goals is going to be progressive overload. AKA, find the exercises that work for you and then continue to make them more challenging over time to ensure that your body is forced to change. 
Your body cares about responding to a stimulus that you give it, aka moving weights, and not necessarily having a variety of different exercises. The next thing that you shouldn't do is judge your progress strictly on one measurement. The scale doesn't tell the whole picture. How you look and how you feel are just as, if not more important than what your weight tells you. I've been so obsessed with gaining weight in the past that I would stuff my face just to see the scale go up. I looked bloated and soft and I felt like garbage. Conversely, I know a ton of people who are obsessed over losing weight that they go to the extent of malnourishing, overtraining, and dehydrating themselves. Neither of these things are healthy, which is why you need to consider how you look and how you feel into your progress and not just worry about what the scale says. And the last thing that you shouldn't do is give up. If you've heard it once, you've heard it a million times, taking care of your body is a marathon, not a sprint. And that's what we all go to the gym for, to improve ourselves, improve our health, get a little bit stronger and have a good time. As cliche as it sounds, there are gonna be times where you're unmotivated, but you just need to push through it. What matters is the result, and you're gonna be glad that you kept moving forward because that's all a part of your fitness journey. That was three things that you should do and three things that you shouldn't do when starting off at the gym. If you found this video helpful, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. That would mean the world to me. And let me know some of your questions down in the comments. I'm out of here. I love you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.